In this video, we'll be going over how to take an occupational history. What is your occupation? This is a question that Bernardino Ramazzini, the father of occupational medicine, proposed that all physicians needed to ask their patients. Our health is heavily influenced by the type of occupation we are employed in, given a larger proportion of our adult life is spent working. Work has the ability to confer both positive effects, bringing financial stability and purpose to life, and negative effects, such as harm and injury, on a person's physical, social, and psychological well-being. It is therefore important when a patient comes to you with symptoms that you include occupation as part of your history taking. The benefits of taking an occupational history Identifying that the cause of a worker's symptoms is related to a workplace hazard allows you to make an accurate diagnosis and hopefully influence the course of disease early by removing the exposure. You prevent further exposures to other workers and depending on how serious the workplace injury was, it will likely lead to a review of the health and safety protocols in the workplace. There are certain scenarios where taking an accurate occupational history is important in identifying the cause of occupational related injuries and illnesses. The first is pre-employment screening. Often employers employing workers for high risk roles will request an occupational history, particularly in regards to past exposures to hazards. This creates a baseline to evaluate the future risk of developing injuries or conditions while employed. Occupational health surveillance. These are medical assessments performed to monitor workers that work in environments that where there are high risk of exposure to a particular hazard. For example, this can include asbestos, silica, or organophosphates. For many types of hazards, employers are legally required to provide annual monitoring to ensure that the health of workers are not impacted while working in these high risk environments. Fitness for work assessments. When a worker presents with an injury or medical condition, a detailed occupational history is often required to evaluate whether a worker will be able to continue safely performing their role. It is also a vital component of many workers' compensation assessments, where a clear link needs to be established between an injury or medical condition to duties performed by the worker at work, before a claim can be accepted. So the first question you would start asking is to describe their clinical symptoms. Here you'll be using open-ended questions and listen to the patient describe to you any symptoms that they're experiencing. This is important as workers often describe common medical problems such as rash or asthma symptoms or present with non-specific symptoms such as headache, nausea or difficulty concentrating. You need to explore any temporal link in terms of hazard exposure. So you would ask questions like, do you think your work contributed to your symptoms? Has there been any change in your work routine? Are your symptoms better or worse when you're off work for a few days compared to when you return to work or are back at work? Do colleagues at work have similar problems? Do you have any health problems or injuries connected to your present job or past jobs which required you to change jobs? You would also ask for any relevant past medical history relevant to the exposure. The next set of questions would be asking, what kind of work do you do? Often a simple job title is insufficient in allowing the examiner to visualize the various roles which a job requires. For example, a laborer can perform many tasks and can vary between workplaces. They can be operating machinery, working at heights, handling dangerous materials, or even heavy manual activities. You would ask the specifics of the job. Using open-ended questions, you would ask the worker to describe a typical day in that job. Questions can include what are your duties? Does the job involve any task or work methods which are particularly hazardous? Are you exposed to any health hazards such as dust, fumes, chemicals, radiation or loud noise? You would ask about the duration of the job and the extent of exposure during the day. So for example, when did you start this current role? How many hours per week do you work? In terms of exposure, it's a prolonged or short time frame. You also ask about the intensity of the exposure. 
So for example, was dust visible in the air? Or was there a strong smell or odour present in the workplace? The next set of questions, you will try to ask the worker to describe their workplace environment. So for example, is it an indoor or an outdoor environment? What sort of work is being performed? You would then ask if there's adequate controls in place to minimise exposures. So for example, is it adequately ventilated? You would also ask what type of ventilation systems are in place and whether it's working. In terms of PPE use, you would ask workers whether they're compliant with their use, do they fit properly, is the equipment regularly maintained, is protective clothing provided and changed after shifts and laundered by the company. You would also ask about general hygiene in the workplace. Do workers smoke at work? Do you have a separate lunch area to eat lunch? How often and do you wash your hands at work? And for the male workers, are they clean shaven? You would then ask the worker to provide a history of all their previous roles going from chronological order for most recent and describe any associated hazard exposures in the workplace. The final set of questions would involve environmental history. So the intent of these questions is to identify certain important exposures in the home or nearby environment that may be clinically significant in the development of medical disorders. So these questions involve, have you ever changed your residence because of a health problem? Are there any neighborhood environmental exposures? So for example, do you live close to a factory or other industrial complexes? Do you have any hobbies or crafts that you do at home? Does your spouse or other household member have contact with hazardous chemicals or dust at work? And finally, details of your home. For example, age, particularly involving asbestos, lead paint, old pipes, contaminated soil, or recent renovations. Is there any wood stoves? Is there any presence of biological agents such as mold? and the use of chemicals and household products in the home. In summary, occupational history is a critical component of any history taking. A person's occupation can involve many duties and have many potential hazardous exposures. Therefore, specific questions need to be asked to obtain this information. A detailed occupational history allows the physician to make an accurate diagnosis and therefore implement an effective management plan.